Well, hello again, boys and girls. Today we're going to talk about um, octovalves and the octopus. For those of you who don't know, a million years ago when I was young, uh, if Detroit was winning, an octopus would fly out of the stands and drop into the middle of the ice. That would cause a guy to come out with a snow shovel to try and scrape it off the ice and whatnot, while the rest of us had a chance to run and grab a beer, or have a drink of beer, or try and steal someone else's beer. And that's kind of like what it was in the old days when the octopus was around. But now, now we have the octovalve. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the octovalve. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you some stuff. But <clears throat> when Rowan Associates is still in the process of trying to make business, and we have to, we have to start selling things. And so we're going to be selling a lot of the magic that's in here. We can't give it all away. So I'm going to start right now with um, the coolant manifold, which is this one right here. The coolant manifold is, uh, in essence, made out of molded nylon. Um, it's got 11 separate pieces. 21 ports are, uh, are uh, glued into this thing. So you can see from the front and the back that, uh, that these components are, are basically um, hot plate welded into the into the into the base here. Now, uh, you'll also notice too that there's some inserts that are put in on both sides. Some of them are threaded, and some of them are basically just for a crush. So they don't um, they don't have a a, a way of safe uh, breaking off the plastic. The reason that uh, that this is made in so many components is because um, you'd run into something called die lock. There's no way of pulling the pieces apart if, uh, if, I, if I add too many of these points. So this would be a die lock point right here. Not possible to make the, uh, the mold uh, uh, move out of the way. So sometimes you'd have slides and lifters, but this would just get too complicated. Now, this is a good idea uh, for what they've got, but it's not the only idea. This is uh, from ugh, 1998 or something like that. This intake manifold was made, and it doesn't have any extra parts glued to it. It has actually encased inside uh, a bunch of butterfly valves and things like that. Uh, this process is good for low volume, and it's called, um, it's called Lost Core Technology. Uh, this product right here, it won uh, uh, the Plastics Award uh, in 1999. This was a BMW product uh, that we worked on. So this could be done the same way, but um, the volumes on this, I think, are much higher than the volumes that were on, the, uh, on that uh, V6 engine. So let's go over here a little bit and look at the uh, octo valve itself. So uh, we'll get a little picture of that. And then, as you can see, there's um, it has eight channels, and uh, those eight channels are going to be going to the various different um, opportunities that we have in order to make sure that uh, all of the valves and the bypass flow and all the other stuff that's going on is going in the right direction. So underneath the, the little uh, emblem here is a uh, four-position stepper motor, and this, this stepper motor will move and shift depending on what load or what, uh, what action the, uh, the, the coolant system is calling for. The little valve here is, uh, is like genius. I really wish that, uh, that uh, more people would uh, take a, a look at how to take a whole bunch of functions and turn it into one. So let's move over here a little bit to um, what I think is on Elon's desk at home. At least that's what he said. This is the, um, this is the base manifold, the aluminum manifold. And the aluminum manifold has a bunch of pieces inside, uh, in, like in this bag here. And, uh, and in essence, what this is doing is it's shifting the position or the flow characteristics to the various different uh, parts of the cooling system. And this is, uh, I believe, made out of a semi-solid forged component. So semi-solid forging means like the aluminum is the consistency of butter, uh, like uh, semi-hard butter. And you put it in and put it into a mold and whack, and now you make it look like, uh, I don't know, Elvis or something. This one 
is doing the same sort of a thing, only difference is this is using semi-solid aluminum. And I can cut it with a butter knife, but it will retain its shape. When you whack it inside of a, a forging, uh, forging operation, you'll, uh, you'll get these absolutely wonderful characteristics here. And you can see that the backside has a plate that's put on. That plate then is um, braze welded to the back side of the, uh, the, the semi-solid casting. It gives you a nice finish. And then, of course, on top of that, you've got a couple of, uh, a couple of other pieces that are, uh, are welded in place at a later time. But one of the other things that's kind of uh, cool is the use of EDM. Electric discharge machines to cut these different uh, shapes out so that the, uh, the manifold itself can breathe. It has, to, it has to move because as things get hot or cold, uh, and you could have a combination of hot and cold inside this unit, they have to be able to move around a little bit so that they don't break free or, worse yet, uh, cause leaks. So I really do like the fact that they've used the semi-solid forging. This is a, an excellent way to uh, manufacture a product that isn't going to have porosity and will not give you uh, failures in the future. The other thing that's cool about it is this is machined accurately enough so that when the, um, when the plastic manifold goes over the top, sliding that in is going to be no problem whatsoever. Everything is going to fit like a glove and you're probably not going to get any leaks. This is a really good idea. So let's look a little bit uh, as to how these things actually fit together. So if we take these two components and we lay the, uh, the aluminum part over the top of the plastic part, it's like uh, those two little bumps at the top here are like little goal posts. And if I can, I can slide in. They fit, fit together, something like that. So now from here, you'd have the, uh, the ports coming out of the, uh, the aluminum case going to wherever they need to go to. And you also can access the plastic case. This is a really compact, great, great way to put things together. I'm very, very intrigued and, and really excited about this product. That's why I think we, we need to try and sell this, uh, this report a little early for those people, especially the tier one and two suppliers that, that might be getting into manufacturing something similar to this for one of the other OEMs. So also, uh, this is the accumulator. And uh, the accumulator, we've already talked about before, um, it is also brazed on. And this is the one where we've, uh, we've noticed that they're using um, friction stir welding. So this is a pretty good desk ornament, I guess. But uh, there's also the two other uh, components that would be going on. This is the chiller assembly here. And you can actually see it labeled on there. And then <clears throat> over here, and over here, you can see that this is the um, LCC assembly. OK, so the one thing that I did notice and did like was the way that the Chinese are uh, putting their labels on. These are all lasered, laser welded with the uh, 3D barcodes. And um, you can see that the uh, paper labels, like apparently this said uh, made in Mexico. So I'm assuming it's assembled in Mexico. Um, and I have no clue what that is, but it's gone. But you can see that the Chinese uh, lasered, uh, lasered labels, uh, uh, they're going to they're be impervious to everything. So now what we've got is pretty much all of the things that, uh, that, that we would need to do in order to make this. But there is something that I think we should be talking about, and that's the, the way this was designed. Um, this is different. This is more like um, what I would expect to see on a fuel system for uh, jet engines or uh, transmission, uh, transmission type of a design. These things are, um, I don't exactly know how to describe it, but, but they're totally different than what we would normally see if we were looking at something designed by a normal OEM. So I think that I think that uh, this is one of the better parts of the car. I'm hoping that we can turn this out and get it into the hands of people who really need to know about this, like OEMs and tier one suppliers. And I would hope that maybe uh, we can get you all to start thinking about buying 
This is a standalone report for the heat pump. Um, we are going to be pushing, trying to sell our products uh, for, the, for the near future because I believe we're going to be ready to start selling here in about, um, about two weeks. The other thing that maybe you should know too is that we're going to be doing testing on the second car and that will also be another report that, uh, that we'll be able to probably sell soon. So anyway, uh, make sure you tip those cashiers. They, they still need the cash. And uh, let's try and stay healthy out there. Have a great day, everyone. So long.